Hey guys. I wanted to shoot a much requested video for you guys today. Um, you may have seen in my stories that I've been experimenting with a rocky mixture um, on my plants, especially the ones that aren't so happy in LECA. Um, so I wanted to kind of take you through what I'm doing and um, you know how it's been working so far. Uh, I wanna give the biggest disclaimer I've ever given in that I'm really just starting with this. Um, I don't know a lot yet. I've only seen some stuff be good and some stuff, yeah, it's mostly been good. Um, but I'm no expert on this and I'm still just learning. So my hope is to do some sort of follow up in a little while when I have a little bit more information. But I wanted to get you guys started in, for those of you who are really curious about this um, and give you the information that you've been asking me for. So a couple of weeks ago, Jenna and I at Root and Stem Tropicals, uh, check out her page, she's so awesome. Uh, we were talking about how we could recreate uh, Lechuza Pond ourselves and uh, found that it was just three ingredients, um, pumice, lava rock, and something called zeolites. Um, so what, what, what we did was buy those ingredients and so far I've been testing out kind of a ratio I made up um, to see how this is going in the plants. Um, what I will say about these ingredients. So pumice is a type of rock thing. Um, it really provides a lot of air and also wicks up moisture. And you're gonna notice that pretty much about all these ingredients. Um, they do both, they're porous and provide a little bit of air, um, but they also are moisture absorbing and are able to retain moisture pretty well. Um, and I think that's the key to a lot of these things that we put in these rockier mixes, um, is really making sure that they can stay dry but absorb moisture. Same kind of thing with lava rock. Lava rock kind of reminds me of like teeny tiny versions of LECA, but you know, it's just this really light, you know, <laughs> porous substance that, uh, that is really able to retain moisture really well. And then last one is kind of this weird thing that we've probably not used too much in gardening, um, but it's called zeolites. And it kind of, again, just looks like little bits of gravel. But I've, you know, what it is, is it's actually a water purifying substance. Um, and I, I tried to read the Wikipedia page. Zeolites is kind of a catch all term for like a lot of things. So I don't even really know what this is, but it came from kind of like an aquarium supply store as meant to be used in water to make sure that it takes out pollutants in the actual water substance. So I thought that was maybe a great thing to keep in here um, to make sure that bacteria is not growing um, and that any pollutants or, or bad actors in the substance would be dispelled. So what have I done so far? And I kind of love like doing these little stripey layouts here, but um, I have right now two parts pumice, two parts lava rock, and one part zeolite. Um, some of the earlier ones I made, uh, I actually did the even, all three, um, but then I was like, you know, let's get more of the substrate in it, less of this kind of more chemical reducing actor that can still act, but I don't think it needs to be in such high quantity. Again, I'm guessing right now. So that's where I'm at right now is two, two, one. Um, and then I mix them together and, uh, and then use them as my substrate. So, um, you know, I'm gonna convert a Hoya Grey Ghost today, uh, but just to show you some of the plants that I've already converted and how they're doing, um, let me show you one of the first plants I converted this to. It's my Calathea orbifolia. This plant was in LECA for a really long time and it was just never happy. Um, I put it in a terrarium, also really unhappy. It got a lot of browning on the leaves. It grew a lot of, I would assume, fungus. I don't really know. It was super unhappy in LECA. Didn't really grow leaves very much. So I brought it over to what I'm calling my Rocky mix, Rocky Road mix. If anyone has a good name for this, let me know, put it in the comments. Um, but what it does, what, what I've noticed is that in just the maybe two to three weeks since I've had this in it, I've already grown one, two perfect new leaves. I see no more browning. Um, the plant is looking happier than it's ever looked. So I really like that. This one is still sitting in a self-watering planter because uh, calatheas like to stay a little bit more moist. 
Um, this does stay topped off with water and nutrient water. There is no nutrients in this substrate, so you do have to add your own. I kind of love that because I really like controlling how much nutrients my plant gets. Um, so, so far, so good with the Calathea orbifolia. Another one I converted a few weeks ago, just on the first shot, was this Anthurium clarinervium. This is one of my favorite plants, and I've been so upset that like I can't make this plant happy. Um, it was in Lekka for a year and grew one leaf, and it's like this weird tall leaf, and dumped the other three leaves that it was growing that were so beautiful. So this is a plant that I really, really want to rehab. Um, switched her to this rocky mix. Again, keep her in a fairly um, wet version of it. Um, and so far seems good. Haven't seen a leaf yet. There is a little bit of a growth point happening. So I'm pretty excited about that. But, uh, you know, and I give the, put the sphagnum at the roots to kind of retain the moisture there. So hopefully, um, you know, I can update you guys on this plant and hopefully she'll do a lot better in this mixture than she was in Lekka. Um, I'm really hoping she turns around because again, it's one of my favorite plants. Um, and another one that I converted more recently is a Hoya. Um, this was in Lekka for a while. Originally it was really happy and I think it was when it was really root bound in a very small pot of Lekka. But over time, I, I converted it to a bigger pot and it was super unhappy in the bigger pot. I think it was something maybe like around this size. Um, and it was, it was really unhappy in that pot. Um, it started to get really sad. It never really grew any more leaves. So I didn't really know what was up. So thought this would be a good one to experiment a Hoya with. Um, and for the Hoyas, I'm kind of leaving them a bit drier. Um, I'm following a lot of what uh, Jenna at Root and Stem Tropicals does with her Lechuza Pond. So definitely check out her highlights on how she does this. But um, this, this one is, seems to have perked right back up. Like this is a happy, pretty happy plant. So, um, so far I'm kind of optimistic about how the Rocky Mix is working out. Um, it seems to be doing really well. It seems like the plants that were really unhappy and like are doing really well in it. Um, the ones that like to stay more wet and humid, I'm keeping them moist. The ones that like to stay drier um, and are more, you know, succulenty, I'm keeping them without an outer pot, but I'm still keeping the, the mixture fairly moist. And um, we'll see how these things continue to go. You know, um, I, again, I'll try to keep you guys posted either in my stories or with another follow-up video in the future. But now, let's go ahead and make this Grey Ghost uh, soil free. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up this mixture fairly evenly. And guys, how pretty is this, honestly? Like, I think this is one of the prettier substrates I've ever seen. It's like this warm brown and this white and this gray, and I just love it. So, Kind of mix that up, looks pretty good, looks pretty well mixed. And um, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually gonna rinse this out. There's a lot of like dust and stuff in here, which I'm sure is probably fine, but I kind of just like to clean it out just so that the water that it might be sitting in is always as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go rinse that out and I'll be right back. So now that this is rinsed out, you can see it, it's pretty much the same. Um, I ran it until the water started to kind of run clear. Um, I don't think it'll run totally clear, but I just wanted to get a lot of those like dust particles off of it. Um, I'm gonna be converting this to a, another small planter. I really don't recommend in Soil Free upgrading your pot too much bigger than the one it came in. From what I found, a lot of Soil Free plants really like to be fairly root bound. So um, I am not going to give this a much bigger pot. Um, and what I've done is kind of cut the top of a nursery pot where the lip is so that it fits exactly in this planter, which I got from Rose Hip uh, Social in Greenpoint, which I highly recommend. They're amazing. So um, I'm going to, should have thought this through. I'm gonna go dump this uh, soil. Okay. So now you can see I've gotten rid of almost all of the soil on the roots. 
um, and she's ready to be converted. I'm really excited to see how healthy and beautiful these roots are. I just got this plant in the mail about two weeks ago, and I always like to let plants acclimate in whatever they came in before converting them because shipping is really stressful on a plant. Being in a dark box is really stressful on a plant. So I think the last thing you wanna do and the biggest mistakes I see are usually from converting a plant that has just recently arrived in your house. So I always try to rehab them and, and keep them in some nice warm light, give them water um, and, and make sure that they're not getting too, too many changes at first. So that being said, um, this plant is going here. I have this nursery pot and it has some really big holes in the bottom. So I'm gonna close those up by using a dryer sheet here. So I've kind of covered up all those little holes in there with this dryer sheet so that nothing spills out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start filling it. Just like with LECA, I like to fill it up about a third of the way up before I even put the plant in, maybe even a little bit more, just so that the roots have place to grow. Okay. And then we put the plant in, just kind of hold it in place right there so that it can stay the way we want it to look. And throw the little rocky mix all around it to hold it in. Awesome. All right, guys, this is what she looks like. I'm kind of obsessed. So pretty. I feel like even prettier than in soil. Um, and she's just gonna go in here. For now, the soil's pretty wet. I'm probably not gonna water it too much. Um, but in a few days, I'll be able to visibly see when this gets very dried out. You can tell there's a deep color difference when this is dried out. And also you can kind of look and see, I mean, I'm probably not gonna have this sitting in too much water. Usually it soaks up in, in a few days, but you still don't really need to water it until like a few days later. So this is a pretty self-sustaining um, situation, <laughs> but um, that's kind of, that's where we ended up. So I hope that was helpful for you guys today. Um, if you're interested in picking up, uh, the pumice and the lava rock are available from Bonsai Jack. They're great, um, check them out. Um, the zeolites I was able to find on eBay, um, but I think it's just something to look around on the internet. I think you can find it at like aquarium and fish supply stores too. So that one's kind of the weird wild card. Um, but I hope this helps. Um, good luck getting started. Again, I don't know the specifics and like, I don't really have too many answers um, set in stone. There's not a lot documented and I'm just getting started. But, you know, feel free to let me know uh, what kind of things you guys are, are looking out for um, and how, how this is going for you and if you guys have, have tried this out yourself. So I hope this was a great video for you today um, and I hope you guys are all enjoying your time at home with your plants.